everyone. Welcome back to my Code to Care uh, series. Uh, today, I'm going to be diving into a uh, kind of a deep topic, but a very important topic when you're deploying a machine learning model in production, and that is the choice of a threshold. Um, and, uh, and I'll describe that more in the next 10 minutes. But a threshold is a really important decision that you'll make with the leadership uh, of your customer, the leadership um, uh, of your departments where the machine learning model is going to work. And it really dictates a balance between kind of finding, um, casting a wide net and finding like a lot of examples to use your model to find a lot of examples or being very accurate and not bothering your users with a lot of false positives. Uh, and I'll explain all that uh, a little bit more in the next uh, uh, next few minutes. So um, the example that I'm going to use is a machine learning model that predicts a yes or no uh, question. And so it's not a generative AI model. It's not generating text or images or anything like that. It's predicting a yes or no. And a ton of models are like this. So predicting whether a patient's going to get sepsis in the hospital or whether a bank transaction is fraud or whether an email is spam or whether a patient's going to show up for their appointment or not or an insurance company is going to pay their claim. These kind of are yes, no questions. And a lot of machine learning model is geared toward answering questions like this. And these are called binary classifiers, if you want to know the machine learning uh, lingo. So it's binary. It's a yes, no question. You're trying to just classify an example into one of those two groups. Uh, the other thing about these models is you're usually looking for a minority. So it's maybe not a needle in a haystack, but it could be. But but you're looking for something that's maybe the single digit percent. Um, so most bank transactions are not fraud. Most email is not spam. Actually, I'm not positive on that one. Um, but most patients show up for their appointments or most claims are paid, that kind of thing. So you're looking for that 5%, that 10% uh, type type of thing and looking for those examples. So that part's not important um, uh, to this, but it's usually the case that you're looking for this uh, minority. Uh, and the other thing is you're usually dealing with a machine learning model that is not 100% perfect. Uh, so that's where this threshold really uh, comes into play. So it's good enough. It's accurate enough to be useful, to be safe, to want you to put it into uh, production, but it's not 100% accurate. Um, and uh, and you'll see how that factors in uh, in a moment. So uh, the other thing about machine learning models is models like this don't actually predict yes or no. They pick, predict the probability of being yes, probability of this example being yes. So they come up with a probability, not a yes, no. So for instance, is this bank transaction fraud? Or will this patient show up for their appointment? Or is this patient portal message urgent or not? It's The model's not going to say yes or no. It's going to say the probability of it being urgent or being fraud or being spam, that sort of thing. So this creates flexibility. So for instance, if you had a machine learning model that just predicted whether it was going to rain tomorrow, that's not as useful as predicting the probability that it's going to rain because then you could write some rules. So if it's over... 80%, I'm going to bring my umbrella. If it's above 90%, I'm going to cancel events or things things like that. So a probability gives you more flexibility in what you do with the output of the model, but it gives you an agonizing decision, and that is this threshold. And I just found it's agonizing because I've been in numerous customer projects where there have been many, many hours discussing where to draw this line. And by the line, I mean... The number above which probabilities above that line, you're going to say those are positive, those are yes, and numbers below the line, you're going to say no and leave those alone. So that's really what the threshold uh, is. And I would describe this as a balance. This is um, the way I found between finding them all, finding them all. Uh, and bothering your users. With um, with uh, false positives, uh, basically. And so you're really kind of balancing the need to cast a wide net, or your desire to cast a wide net and find all the examples of whatever, fraud or no-shows or that sort of thing, with bothering your users with too many false uh, positives. Okay. Um, so I'm going to describe that uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more through an example. 
So the example that I'm going to use is patient portal messages, uh, where we're identifying whether those messages are urgent or not. And I'm going to make the math simple. I'm going to say that uh, 10% of patient portal messages are urgent. Okay. So, um, so we're going to build a model to try and find that uh, those urgent messages. Now, imagine I'm going to fill out this table here. But imagine um, your data set of a hundred messages, and you the model doesn't know the answer, but you know the answer whether these messages are urgent or not. So, ten of these hundred are urgent. Uh, and you're going to give these 100 to the model, and the model is going to predict a probability of being urgent on every message. So if you imagine that table over here being 100 long, if the model and it having be sorted by probability, and actually I'll take a, I'll pause the video, I'll take a moment to, um, uh, to write in some examples here. Okay, so I wrote in some examples. Imagine each of these being patient portal messages or whatever your domain might be. Imagine the features are the text of the message or a bunch of features about the patient or appointment or bank transaction, whatever. Uh, and the probability is the output of the model. And I've sorted this by probability with the highest on top and the lowest on the bottom. And again, imagine this being 100 long and 10% of these messages being urgent. So there's a, 10 of these are urgent. If the model wasn't working at all, where would you expect to find those 10 messages in this table? So the answer is they would be spread out evenly. If the model wasn't working at all, the probability column would be kind of random. It would be randomly sorted in a sense. And so you can imagine every 10th record, roughly, um, would be the real urgent ones. So they'd be scattered throughout this list of 100. Now, if the model was working then you would expect the real 10 urgent messages to be near the top of this table, okay? To have the highest probability, okay? So the model's ability to sort the, um, the positive class, basically the urgent message at the top, is the measurement of accuracy that, uh, that we typically use. If the model was perfect, it would be the very first 10. Those would be the real urgent messages but we're dealing with imperfect models. So they might be 95% accurate. So they're really not going to be perfect. Those, th those 10 urgent messages might be within the first 20 messages or something like that. So let me take a moment and I'll fill in an example uh, for you. And then we'll talk about the threshold concept. Okay, so you can see now I filled in the label uh, column. I notice I have two row number nines. We'll call that 9A and 9B. Uh, which isn't a very good way to do it, but I don't want to rewrite that whole board. Um, but you can see in that last column there, the label that I, I've shown you where the urgent messages are, the 10 urgent messages. And you can see they're all in the first um, seven, well, 18 rows, basically. So they're all in the first 18 rows out of 100. So this is a pretty good model. It's sorted these things to the top. It's found all 10 in the first 18. So, so the question now is, where should you put the threshold? And um, I'll give you um, a starting place. So one place to put the threshold is at the average. So if 10% of messages are urgent, then put it at the 10% mark. Okay? So you take a look at um, uh, the top 10 messages in this case. You'd see where that... Uh, probability score is, and you say, okay, anything above 90 or above, first of all, most models won't be that evenly distributed, but anything uh, above that number, we're going to call urgent, and anything below, we're going to call non-urgent. So what that would mean is that we would find one, two, three, four, five, six of the 10 messages. Uh, so we'd find 60% of the urgent messages, um, uh, but we wouldn't find them all. Okay. Um, so that's kind of an average uh, threshold. And, and on the other hand, we would have four of the 10 inaccurate, that we inaccurately said were urgent. So that's the false positive concept. By the way, false positive is false positive, false negative, true positive, and true negative are very confusing. And I only like to use one of those four terms when I speak to uh, business and clinical users, and that's false positive. So if you only use one of the terms, it gets a little bit less confusing. And you could think of false positive if you replace the word false as incorrectly predicted. 
and then you replace the word positive with whatever you're predicting. So in this case, urgent messages. So we've incorrectly predicted urgent um, is what a false positive uh, means. So we have 40% false positives. We predict four messages were urgent and they weren't. So that's a false positive rate. So you bothered your users with 40% inaccurate messages and you found six out of 10. Okay. Um, so that's one way to think about the threshold. Another way to think about the threshold is down here. And this is the find them all desire. So this one. So a lot of leadership, when I talk to business folks and clinical folks, always gravitate to the find them all threshold. Because after all, we put together this machine learning model. We're trying to use it to find examples here of fraud or no-show or whatever. Um, let's find them all. Okay. Um, the problem with find them all is the amount of false positives. So in this case, we write, we put it at 18. That means 10 were right, 8 were wrong. So 8 out of 18 were wrong almost half the time. So you're giving your users twice the work. Um, uh, there's only 10% urgent, but now we're guessing 18% are urgent. So we're casting a wider net, uh, and nearly half of the mo half of the model's experience is wrong. And so you get a lot of negative feedback from your users, um, but you get maybe positive feedback from leadership because you're really finding what you wanted to find. And then the other side of the coin is putting the threshold here. Uh, and that is never be wrong. Okay? So just put, just put it so high that the model, when it makes a prediction, it's right. Okay? Uh, at least it's right in that, in that direction. Um, and so in that case, you're... You're putting a very high threshold, but you'll kind of always be right in your predictions. Uh, and that is, um, that's what the users want. You know, they don't want extra false alarms or extra work or that sort of thing. They don't mind a model that's going to help them find those needles in a haystack, but don't throw a bunch of other hay at this thing uh, and, and bother me. So that's really the balance. And I've seen many machine learning projects fail or struggle because they picked this. Um, they really wanted to find them all. They picked a low threshold and they pummeled their users with a lot of false positives. The users complain that this model is junk. It predicts way too much. There's all kinds of inaccurate stuff it predicts and then, they, and then it gets shut down. So I've heard numerous cases of models uh, like that. So you really need to consider for your use case whether that's the right way, balance that you want. Okay. So what I have found is there's um, three, three good starting points, I think, for deciding on a threshold. And then, and then I'll close. That's the last thing I'll talk about. So one is to match the average. Uh, and that's that arrow right there. So if 10% of your messages are urgent or 1% of your, your transactions are spam, or, uh, fraud or that sort of thing. Just predict that 10% or predict that 1%. So match that average. And then see how that feels. See how the find them all di um, dimension feels. How What percent are we finding? See how the false positive dimension feels. How does this balance feel if you match the average? Okay. Uh, second um, concept I would uh, propose, another one to try out for size, is the 80-20 rule. So what if you found 80%? How would that feel? Uh, so in this case, 80% would be when we get to the eighth Y. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That would be right here. So here we would predict 12 of the 100 would be urgent. So we're casting a slightly wider net in order to catch 80% of the cases that we want. So 80-20 is just a, you know, it's the Pareto principle. It does uh, hold in a lot of different uh, examples. So that would be another thing to try on for size. Um, if, I, if I went with trying to find 80%, not them all, but just cast a slightly wider net, um, would that be a good balance between finding the majority of them and not bothering my users? And then the other, and then the last thing I would um, uh, suggest is a false positive rate. Equal to, I don't know, something you think you can stomach, your users could stomach. 
Um, so I've seen one third bantied about a lot, uh, and I have also done done that. So you could say, well, from our user's point of view, what what amount of false positives seems like a good, uh, reasonable balance? Uh, and you could start with a third and see what that looks like. Now that's that's more of a job for Excel. I mean, it's not that complicated, but if you go down threshold at one or two, you have a zero false positive rate. By the time you get to three, you do have a one-third rate, but then it drops four, five, six. And it turns out that actually position 12 um, gives you the false positive rate of one-third. If you go below that, your false positive rate rises above one-third consistently. Uh, So 12, meaning um, we're finding eight. There's four that are wrong. Four divided by twelve is the one third. So that's that's a nice balance. And ultimately, it depends on your use case. So there's certain use cases where finding them all is very important. So fraud in banking might be a case where let's round up, let's find them all. I don't care if I create more work for me and my team. Um, and there are some use cases where you don't want to get that wrong. So spam is a use case where you don't want to accidentally delete that email from somebody's mother <laughs> or some some important email and identify it spam and get rid of it. So you might want to round down a little bit. Let's catch a bunch of spam, but let's not take any real legitimate message and delete it uh, for some user. So it really depends on your use case, um, this, but ultimately it's a really important debate that you will have as you move one of these models into production and ultimately, it's not a machine learning debate. It's really a workflow, trade-off, you know, ultimate success, goals of the project. Um, it's that kind of debate that you'll have with, with leadership to ultimately decide this. So I realize that was kind of a rat hole, but it's really important rat hole um, when you get to the point of putting something into uh, production. And it's a very important decision that may make or break the success uh, of a project and the usefulness of a of a model. Okay, so that was it. Thank you all. Until next time. Bye.